What's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome to another awesome episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. We are on episode 14, I believe. Is that true? Is that true? Are we on episode 14? I, I need a confirmation on that. How are you doing, Addict? Doing pretty good. It's uh, been one crazy week, man. I, I'm, I'm like, I've lost track of the days. Like, I've never reviewed two like forty hour plus games together. Correct. So like, I'm rotating from them. Like, yeah, man. It's um, I'm like, I'm not playing anything else. Um, so I I can't I I can't say that I'm going through what you are currently um. Uh, going through for sure but um it's i i, I kind of have an idea I, I feel bad for uh maddie and, and yes we are on episode 13 i just wanted to confirm that one um so man uh let's uh i apologize to the uh the patreons and you know to the subscribers um we we missed uh uh the show last week but we're gonna you know we're gonna double up on a few things so um, we got a good episode. Well, to, to, be, to be fair, this community is always telling us we got to play games. Well, we both got access yeah. to the Starfield and we played the game. So <laughs> we got access to it like the day before the game, before we record. So it's like I was sitting there and I asked Smooth, you could ask, but I asked him multiple times last week. Smooth, do you want to do the show? Yeah, man, we'll do it tomorrow. And then Sunday happened. Yeah, we'll just do it next week. <laughs> yeah, it, again, it's it was difficult. That 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 first week, it it was hard to do really anything else. I didn't. If you look at my YouTube, I haven't even conducted. I started doing videos again, like because I felt like I had to. Uh, like maybe two days ago, I, I went like a full week um, without uh, uh, doing any uh, other content. So. But uh, we're we're slowly getting uh, back to it, man. So we're gonna start today off episode fourteen. We got a ton of uh, Patreon questions. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, start the show off with that. Get in today's uh, topics, and we'll go uh, from there. So first question is from Master Chief. No, 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 no. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. His name is My Truck Nuts, and his question is Master Chief. Versus Doom guy, who you got in a death battle? I think Doom would absolutely demolish Master Chief. I don't even think it's a fight. Yeah, Doom is literally fighting like demons. Might as well be fighting the devil. Like, like Master Chief has definitely fought like higher tier stuff than just regular humans. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Can how do you compare an elite to a to like a demon? Yo, know, it, it's I mean they do call Master Chief a demon, but how do you compare them? And I I think at the end of the day, even the Covenant, yep, they're just they're just humans in a different race. Like there's nothing special about them. Doom guys fighting people with powers. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely right. Um, as love as much as I like Master um uh, Chief, there is a. Uh, a human uh, behind um, uh, that armor, and um, I don't think Doom guy is like a human. <laughs> um, so even though I prefer Halo games, but if I'm going just realistic on characters, I think uh, uh, Doom guy can he would probably have the edge over Master Chief, considering the things he has to fight versus uh, the things uh, that Chief has to fight. They're just yeah, you know, it would be cool. And and I know this would never happen, and I've screened it from the top of the hills. If if they let those two IPs come together and make a game, like imagine if you, if they didn't have to make it, but a co-op experience game, one person's Doom and one mm -hmm. person's Halo, and it's like kind of like a, a Metro Vandy kind of thing where Doom's things can only go certain areas, and, and Master Chief stuff can only go certain areas. And, like it, it would be cool, you know. It'd be. I, I think they would. The only way for it to make sense because if they did a game like that, you couldn't fight the Covenant. They would have to fight the people that Doom fight. So it has to take place it, in it, Doom's universe. Yeah, because I feel like if if Doom is in Halo's universe, he's finishing that game by noon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that hey, that's that that's a good point. That's a good point. And, 
and imagine like them explaining like doom and i, I know doom doesn't really talk but imagine like the interaction between doom and, and master chief and he like yo do they what you do ain't gonna work down here <laughs> <laughs> You get no, some of the upgrades that Doom has. Yeah, I I can imagine the the, the dialogue. Uh, like if you're in, like in Chief's like if you're from Chief's perspective in a dialogue is or when a cutscenes come, Chief is talking and, and, and Doom guys just either nod yes or nod no. <laughs> the only thing that would give Master Chief a like a, some form of advantage is if they're able to pierce his suit. I don't know if Doom's universe can do that because I don't know too much about how strong Doom's... Because in the Halo universe, the Spartan suits are very vital. So the lore to those are very mm -hmm. strong. I just don't know how those suits of armor would hold up in the Doom universe. Yeah, I mean, that that's a, that's a very good point. Very good point. Um, he has another question, my truck nuts. He says, by the way, I'm a fan. Even though I troll you, I still find you to be a key part of Weapon Wheel. Shout out to the Planet Xbox podcast. Shout out to you, my truck nuts. Appreciate it. Uh, DJ, question number three. He says, since Starfield is close, what are your thoughts on its possibly scoring 85 to 88 on Metacritic? Is that a disappointment? I ask this because it seems like if Starfield is not a 90 plus, many will view it as a flop due to the hype. Attic. I, th I think there's a, a decent chance it gets into the 90 plus. The thing about when it comes to like reviews, is you don't know. The review process can be very fickle sometimes. Very. Yep. And I do think that I do think it's got like a. What do you think is the max cap that you would personally put hit going past? Like in the Metacritic score, like I don't think it goes above a ninety-two. Like that's that's the max. Okay, yeah, I would say um, I think I think yeah I think ninety-two is I feel like peak, and, I, and this is I just considering all factors and what uh, reviewers might um, say, what they might do, how they, it, again, because depending on who you are, how you approach the game <laughs> it may de determine it, 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 and, and I think all reviewers have to factor that in. Um, so, and I think what's going to happen is there's going to be uh, maybe a lot of like skewed uh, in a uh, uh, a pan, but I think a peak 92. And I I personally, if I could give you a peak low, I I don't see how this is. Uh, I don't I don't see it falling Let's below see. 88. Yeah, I was about to say 88. That's 88 night to 92. I'd be surprised if it went. I to be honest with you, I'd be surprised if it went below a 90. But me too. The thing is, is yeah. I don't. I know the review process and i know you know not everyone that li likes these type of games is going to play you got to throw in the factor that every game has to deal with especially exclusives you're going to get you're going to get certain sites that just review bomb it just to get traffic it's just it matters what the middle say you know it, it, if they like it a lot it just depends on how many 10 out of 10s it gets i don't think it's a 10 out of 10 game but it depends on how many the industry gives it yeah um We'll see. Uh, again, you know, we'll be doing, uh, uh, you know, a special podcast uh, coming out on uh, Thursday, uh, which we'll freely obviously talk about, you know, our opinions, our impressions. It'll be pretty much the Planet Xbox version of a review or, you know, preview, depending on <laughs> what we got done at that point in time. But uh, we'll definitely have more to say about Starfield in, in, in detail. Uh, in the next uh, episode of Planet Xbox for sure. Um, and, and no one can ever say you don't play games. You chose to play Starfield last week over making content for Planet Xbox. <laughs> and, and what's funny is people will, cl will clown at you for doing that. Why didn't you give me that content? But in the same breath, they'll say, well, why do you guys talk about systems and stuff over playing the games? Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel like we we lose and lose. Yeah, but they don't and understand that uh, two and two are hand in hand. Both of them are hand in hand. So, Rogue Ninja says, "Smooth and Attic. Do you guys think Xbox fans underestimate and devalue the power of brand consistency and brand identity? PlayStation first party games 
are made fun of because many of their games fall within the same genre, third-person, over-the-shoulder, cinematic action-adventure games. And Nintendo fans get flamed as well as many of their games are often considered kiddie. If they continue to make ongoing series of iterations of games using their notable and recognizable mascots such as Mario, Link, and Samus. I don't think either strategy for Nintendo or PlayStation is wrong because it sensitizes I yeah, sensitizes their respective fan bases. Each fan base knows exactly what they are getting. I don't feel like Xbox has that same brand consistency identity. It feels like Xbox is largely known for offering a large variety of things, which is great. However, I think that makes it difficult to establish an identity for the brand. I hope they lean into being a Western RPG brand. They can still make a variety of things. However, I think it's important for them to establish an identity as the other two big console markets um, makers have. Looking forward to Avowed and anything in the future made by Obsidian. That was a very good question. I like the, the very detailed question. Very good question. Um, I apologize for the things that I uh, tripped over, but um, <laughs> do you think Xbox has an identity problem when it comes to where it's IPs? I think yes. Uh, I think Xbox has had a good a good amount of hits now people want to act like microsoft does nothing but produce you know uh bad performing games but uh, besides redfall their first party now sure some of them was multi have done nothing but produce 80 85 and above games it's just redfall is definitely one of the uh you know the rebels of the bunch but even with those going out there like you said a lot of them were diverse titles mm -hmm. and multiple genres you know I don't think that that necessarily means that Xbox has an identity crisis. I just think it means that there's nothing that Xbox has currently that screams so much like Xbox, like Halo, first-person shooter, you know, Gears, third-person, uh, uh, third-person multiplayer game. Like they don't have nothing like that to grab onto people to where people are like I'm buying an Xbox for this type of game. Yeah, you know, it's more like I'm buying Xbox for Game Pass, and that's fine. But I do think that he is right. They need to lean into the the Western RPG market. They need to be the place to go to play RPGs in general. That's why mm -hmm. I, I always v uh, vocally speak on JRPGs coming to the platform more and more. Mm -hmm. Because it, once you fix that issue and you buy a couple for yourself, yeah, you will have the majority of the best JRPGs on your console. You'll have the best studios making rpgs on your pl uh, western rpgs on your platform and i feel like every year almost every time mm -hmm. unless a sony game is up what wins game of the year an rpg yeah so that's why i think that that's important and they need to really push for that um I'm going to go on the other end. I think um, I don't think Xbox needs to do a Nintendo. And that's the, the funny thing is, is that, yeah, Nintendo games are considered a uh, kitty. They're pretty much consistent on their IPs. Uh, anytime there's a Nintendo platform, you know, you're going to get a Mario. You know, you're going to get a Zelda. You know, you're going to get a Donkey Kong, a Metroid and, uh, and, and, and occasionally maybe a Star Fox. Uh, they, they utilize their IPs. Um, PlayStation has dug deep into this, you know, third person a cinematic action adventure experience. Every game that they've done um, over the last five years has, you know, followed this and it does well for them. It, it, it feels like an event. Um, I think Xbox just needs to be known for a place to go to for games. I like the diversity of Xbox. And the thing is, is that with the PlayStation type games, I do get burnt out uh, with some of them. Um, I actually felt like Ragnarok was one of the first times I saw core PlayStation fans say that they were tired of that formula. Yeah. I, I didn't even finish Ragnarok. I, 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 I got to go back. I, like, I, I, I dropped it because the thing is, I felt like I felt like I just played the game. But so with Xbox, I feel like, yeah, it's cool. Like every once in a while to get a game that, you know, something similar to something PlayStation will put out or you know, uh, one of their, you know, IPs to jump off. We know Xbox has their IP. We know their high IPs that are going to stand out until the these other new things 
eclipse them. We know Halo, Gears, and Forza are the pretty much the pillars that holds Xbox in terms of IP. Uh, those are IPs are synonymous with Xbox. Um, I think the X, that Xbox being diverse and, and we're a couple of years away from uh, some of those games uh, with you know Fable coming, Starfield uh, coming, the stuff Obsidian's uh, going to be doing. I feel like Xbox identity doesn't they don't need to lean into an ip or to be known for any type of game you gotta think about the type of games that they're putting out xbox has a lot of like games like age of empires they have uh games like the survival sims like state of decay and stuff like that grounded is these games that aren't rapidly available like um everywhere and they, they don't often get made and it's like it's these type of games that you didn't know we need it. You know, we are always going to get action adventure games. We're always going to get a first person shooter. Um, but these, you know, high quality, you know, game uh, quality games like um, Grounded, st and st say what you want about State of Decay, but where it's at now, it, it bodes well for the next one. Um, you got the Age of Empires games and stuff like that. Uh, no other first party is doing those types of games. They kind of stick, you know, Nintendo's going to have their platformers and their RP, uh, their, you know, obscure RPGs. PlayStation's going to have their action adventure. No, none of them are putting out quality, like, for example, racing games. I know, say what you want about GT, um, but nobody's putting out com uh, uh, quality um, um, simulators, like, you know, flight sim none of them are putting out uh strategy games or, or quality survival games it, it, that's a market that none of them has pretty much honed in they've been putting out games that are ex pretty much in common with traditional games that all of our other publishers put out let me ask a question then yeah if the quality of games that they put out that even though they're not diverse mm -hmm. Are hitting out of the park as well as PlayStation tends to do. Does that diversity count if it's costing quality of their games in some case? That question for me or the the that's for you. you. Um, oh, hold because on. you can speak all the quality and all the diverse that you want. Yeah, yeah. If it's not hitting the way PlayStation games mm -hmm. are hitting, does it even matter? The, um, I mean, as some. Uh, in in the in the grand scheme of things, it, it, immediately, yes, it matters. In the long term, no, because in a while, after a while, you keep getting these quality games that are scoring well, that are you know in these like type of genres that aren't popular. Eventually, somebody's going to catch on. It's like when finally people finally caught on to Baldur's Gate, right? Three, when people finally caught on to a game like uh, The Witcher and stuff like that. Um, people will finally catch on uh, to those games and they'll, they'll have their uh, peaks. It's like how it took a while for people to finally catch on to the Forza Horizon series. So by the time the third one came out, and uh, uh, it, it, pretty much the, the fifth one was like was the apex, but by the time the third one came out, it became like an anticipated franchise that people you know are actually looking forward to. And I think Xbox has an opportunity to do that with a lot of their games, with a lot of their games that they're putting out. Um, yeah, PlayStation is going to have that movie exposure, but a lot of that stuff that we get from PlayStation, yeah, the, the games are a good quality, but they also do a meticulous job with their marketing. If Xbox applied the same level of marketing that PlayStation does for their game, for each of the type of games they do, those games will be received and, and, and have a broad appeal if they put it out in front of everyone. I feel you. Uh, we got another question from Weedy. He says, watch OG Xbox. Oh, my bad. He says, which OG Xbox game you guys will love to make a comeback? This is an easy question, Attic. You. What OG Xbox game? Yeah, that you would like to make a comeback. Banjo Kazooie. Still. Um. Yeah. I'm going to say. I'm so sick and tired of people saying ill. <laughs> I. You know, the thing is hard for me because I'm not an OG Xbox. You know player you know what i mean i'm familiar with the games but i, don't, I haven't fell in love there wasn't a single ip that i think i fell I think, in love with i think the reason that i want banjo kazooie to come back so much is i want them to have really positive games that wasn't on the n64 because mm -hmm. i feel like banjo kazooie is definitely a nintendo game and at this point mm -hmm. if you're not going to support banjo kazooie you might as well just sell that bastard to nintendo yeah you sell them to nintendo right yeah 
I'm going to say Blinks the cat. I think that um, I think if they 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 could find a way to bring that IP back in today's generation. I would actually like to see Recork brought back properly. It's not an OG Xbox original, though. But I know I'm just saying. No, I mean it, it, they they can. Recork is actually a good game. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you know, missed out on a on a gem. Um, I think Recork is a really really good game. Um, but I think Blinks the cat. I'm, I'm gonna try to. Blinks is backwards compatible, right? I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to play it. I'm gonna try to play Blinks the cat. And Xbox Game Pass, just to, just a little. They really, honestly, by default, all original Xbox games should be in backwards compatible. Uh, should be uh, in Game Pass by default. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I think all. Xbox uh, 360 games now that they're closing the store should be an Xbox Game Pass. Uh, we got a year to play. I got a year to play. I got to buy that an Xbox 360 and play all the 360 games that aren't backwards compatible that I'm slightly interested in. I bought this and somebody on the internet said this was backwards compatible. It's a lie. It's not backwards compatible. It's not backwards Isn't compatible. Isn't there a list you can look before you start spending money and, on stuff? Yeah, so I, find, I don't know why it took me a while to look at the list but there's not a single spider all those spider-man games that i'm having J, uh, that you know jade i'm supposed to be sitting, sitting my way none of them are backwards compatible so now i have to buy an xbox 360 to play some of these games like i, I really i do want to get through them um and good thing they all have you know gamer score and whatnot so they, they still have something worth playing for but i do want to play through this but i i now have a 360 game but no uh xbox uh, no console to play it on because it's not backwards compatible my brother's got one in his closet that he's no longer using. Do you know it's what? Been you, in there for years. Do you know what series is it? Is it like the Xbox 2013 Xbox 360 that tried to like an Xbox One, or is it like the Xbox the black one, the Elite, or is it it's, the OG 360, the white one that still could potentially get rid of? I think it's the one between. I think it's the between one. Matte black one or shiny black? Models. Huh? Is it matte black or shiny black? I don't know. I have to go get it. All right. Well, I'm interested. Uh, Weedy says Embracer Group are closing down some studios. Which studio would you want Xbox to get? Uh, this is easy for me. I just want them to take uh, um, Chris, Crystal Dynamics and uh, Adios Montreal, the games, the, the studios that they took from Square Enix. I want that's who I want Xbox to get. Those are the studios they need. Yeah, and, and maybe and the studio. What studio works on? Um, uh, what studio works on? Uh, Synchro. No, let's not take that one. No, wait, 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 wait. Who made Dead Island 2? Is that an Embracer Studio? I don't. If yeah, it is, I, I want that because that is Dead Island 2. I still is one of my favorite games. Have a zombie game yeah, though. but that, like, it's not. It's not as like it, again. Stay the K. It's. I feel it's, you, it's I feel, I, I, here's the thing though. I think the only studios that they're gonna look at. Mm-hmm. As studios that they're able to merge with the teams that they're currently working mm-hmm. on. I don't think if Crystal Dynamics and Montreal get bought, they're not going to be their independent studios. I think they're going to be merged with the studio they're working with. Mm-hmm. Oh, like the yeah. moment they also oh, get Dynamics, merged into Playground and Crystal Dynamics get merged into uh, the because I think at this point they don't need no more studios. They need talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do need. They need so those maybe they'll rename them to to. Like, I don't know if they would be okay with that. Like, maybe, okay, if if the if the people that own the studios, if they feel a way, well, they don't own them, but they run them. It's like, how about we change the name to something that accommodates to both? But I don't even think Microsoft would do that. Yeah, it's the, just the, like, the, the Crystal Initiative or Initiative Dynamics, <laughs> like, or yeah, so, like Playground, uh, Adios, Adios Playground games. Like, I, yeah, so... I'm not even saying change it to something that like makes sense to both their names. I'm saying change it to a, stu- a, a name that they both agree on. But I don't think that would be it. I think if they bought it, they would just be merged and they would be, you know, play but uh, playground games. And then and at that point, you're not really initiative. buying the thing. You're buying. You're just buying the IPs and the, the and the talent and the talent. Yeah, and then I, imagine after they finish Perfect Art, they reboot Tomb Raider again. Yeah, yeah. Which they're currently working on it on that. So they have still have an opportunity. To acquire that and make that an, an exclusive, bro. And you know, it'd be crazy if they do that and they mer- and they put them in the same world. Yeah, that'd be it. That'd be crazy. Uh, J L Payne says, 
How many hours of PTO did you guys use for Starfield? I used 16 hours, Friday the 1st and the following Tuesday because we're closed Monday. Super high. Oh, yeah. Smart to release this game on, on was it Labor Day weekend, pretty much? On the Labor Day mm-hmm. weekend? Yep. Smart. Now, because I, I can actually fin- finesse another day off. So how many hours of PTO did you guys use? Uh, did you take any PTO for the upcoming release? Uh... Not really. I don't need to take PTO. It was more about negotiating with my girlfriend uh, yeah. because I mean she she was pretty understanding on this title because she knew Starfield is a big game. But there's been times where I've reviewed games and she's just like, okay, the the, the console goes off and it's not like her being controlling. It's just I'd be playing the game for like like ten hours and she's like, okay, that's it. We're going out. We're doing something. I'm like, okay, I guess. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I understand. Like currently, you know, um, I'm doing a lot of home stuff. Mm-hmm. Pretty much like a private contractor at this point. But you know that that's uh, it's been doing well. I, you know, it's funny. Like what I'm doing now, I'm making more money than when I was working. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Great. <laughs> All right. So next question is um, from Crumbside Cheekbuster. Oh, what a name. Wow. Crumbside Cheekbuster. He says, can I get can I get that ad right now? Oh, I get what he's saying. It, the song that I did. Can I, yeah. OK. Serial uh, Mint 23. Would you rather have a first person gears of war or a third person Halo? Third person Halo. <laughs> I, I, I've said it so many times. Imagine a third person Arbiter Halo. <laughs> yeah. Arbiter shooter. Yeah. Um, imagine Arbiter, like him having see, the, the imagine... energy sword and he reaches over and grabs him. And I want a third person Arbiter Halo that is bloody, gory. And, and you, like the energy sword be doing what the energy sport, sword is supposed to be do just be cutting people's heads off blood going everywhere that's why I want the coalition to make a third person Halo game <laughs> see the thing is right I thought that I fantasized about an Arbiter game that was third person but it would be like an action RPG that's how I envisioned it um it, well in the lore, there's, and I've probably said the story, it's probably been a long time, though. In the lore, there's the Arbor that made <laughs> that, because that title used to not be, like, a negative notation. It used mm. to actually be, like, a a respectable title, but mm. there was one Arbor that went rogue and just killed a bunch of people. Like, it, it, it took, like, pretty much an army to kill him. And that's why I feel like, tell his story. You know, mm-hmm. make it like a little five, ten hour, maybe not five, like a seven to ten hour story. It's like a little short project. Let let that Unreal Engine five do what it do. Let Coalition do what it do. Uh, you know, I said it's got to be a gory. You know, it, I think I think that game would do well. Like I really do. Yeah, I mean, hey, you never know. They never know if they don't try, man. So we appreciate all the Patreon members for the questions. Make sure you know you prepare you guys questions for episode fifteen. I think the next episode is. Uh, Starfield, really? I mean, we may not know this. Actually, next we'll episode, we'll probably ask take questions. Like, it, the, it probably won't go up. I would say we'll record that sometime soon, like Tuesday or Wednesday next yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably have BG sent out for the for the questions, like after uh, Weapon Will or Monday. Yeah. Yeah, and they can just ask us questions about uh, Starfield. Starfield. But that's our that's our show next week. Don't yeah. expect another show next Saturday. Yeah. Um, okay. So now that we got that, let's get into the show. 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 Ah, uh, man. A lot of things happened this week. Attic, you put out a lot of videos. Um, yeah, I had to take a break yesterday because uh, you know I I went to watch the Honorator, whatever that movie's called. The uh, Almanheimer, the dude, the, the um, atomic Alman bomb. Atomic yeah, bomb? Okay. people capping the fuck out of that game, out, yeah. out of that movie. That movie's not the worst movie in the world, but it's definitely not what these people like. Neo say he watched that like six times. Does like, it really need to be three hours? That shit six times. 
three, well, six, nine, think, twelve, fifteen. I don't think it was six times. 18. But you get what I'm saying. That's, like, uh, okay. That's more hours. If you watch a movie, you no, know, six times that long. I think, I think long. he did say three times, though. I think he did say three times. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, it, 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 it's. I felt like. Is it a horrible movie? No. Mm-hmm. I actually think it was a very educational movie that, that they did entertaining wise, but there was a movie that was called uh, Valkyrie. It was about uh, the attempted murder on, on on Hitler. And then at Tom Cruise, and I felt like that's around the same vein where it's it's supposed to be educational video to show you a time of, of history, but yeah. I felt like that movie was far more entertaining than this movie was. Like, they sitting there for the third time show me a chalkboard and some math. I don't care. Like, I'm sitting here looking at my girl. She's sleep right beside me, feeling mad, bad, man. I'm, I'm like, no, we can leave. She's like, no, we spent money on this. Where I'm going to I'm gonna watch it. Maybe it'll get better. And then when we left, she's like, AJ, it didn't get better. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I can't. Um, see, I'm not. See, I'm not much of a movie guy. I wanted to see the Meg too, but I waited so long that it's probably going to be on demand in about a week or two, right? It's uh, on demand now. Meg two. Yeah, you can uh, you can buy it on digital right now. Okay, all right, and there there, there you go. Because <laughs> after, because originally we was going to go watch Meg two, and then I, I it, but so many people put this movie in my ear. I even think about my girl wouldn't like it. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. I was being mad, uh, mad selfish. Uh, but it, I thought it was gonna be a good movie. It, but you know, it was a fun. It was a fun movie. It was an okay mm-hmm. movie. But as far as like what everyone said, no, it was. It wasn't that good. Wasn't that good? Okay. So, um, what else did uh, we have? We had. Um, so we had obviously uh, the Gamescom is uh, wrapping up. There was some troll. That troll Jeff Keeley's stage thing again. Like I don't know, he needs to. Apparently, really... apparently he's not trying to troll Je- uh, Jeff Keeley. That's just him. Like he, he's done that multiple shows. Like he, I, I seen some people sharing some kind of like show in another country where he did the same thing there too. Wow. Yeah. Um. But like. So how does Jeff Keighley still keep having this done to yeah, him? Yeah, my thing is he needs to invest into some, some, Did you some notice, security. Like if you if you looked during that time, if you looked at it, like his bodyguard, the dude's up there with Jeff Keighley, and he's stopping other people from coming on the stage. And I'm like, why didn't you get the man that you're right beside off the stage? Yeah. Like if you look at it, it's the dude's coming off the stage, and the dude's already behind him. So it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, it's a pen. So, what did you think of the show overall? I did not get to actually watch it. I had to, like, for game time was taking place during like during work, and I know they take they're across the sea and whatnot, so the hours are exactly what I expect from a Jeff Keighley show. It's gonna have some decent announcements, but like Mm -hmm. nothing out, like nothing to, to like really catch my my uh my attention. I mean, to be fair, he did kind of give us an, uh, like set our expectations before yeah. the show. Yeah, he pretty much came out openly on Twitter and said, "Don't expect any crazy announcements at the show." Say so that's the problem you have when you run a company like that. Like, you're always gonna have to go off other people's generosity. He does not yeah. a studio. He doesn't do anything like that. So, if Xbox has something they want to show at their stage. He's not getting that Xbox content. PlayStation, same thing. Nintendo, same thing. He's really got to generate third-party hype. And most of the time, who's working with third-party? Platform holders. Mm-hmm. So they probably like, no, you ain't showing Assassin's Creed Mirage. That's our announcement. So what's Jeff going to do then? Go to more, more indie-style things. Look, he, he gets the occasional big announcement, but let's yeah. be real here. He's never announced anything like Colossal. Um... Didn't he get like? Didn't he get like? I mean, I would colossal. It depends on what you. He saw. He, he, I think he, he got Alan Wake the, too, right? He got also got once, control. He got. He did get like one of the first big gameplay reveals that we ever seen with Elden Ring. Yeah, but like once again, all these games were announced. Like, I'm not saying that he doesn't. 
he doesn't get like these big announcements. I'm saying in terms of like the stuff that a lot of people care about, people care about mm-hmm. Alan Wake too. Mm-hmm. But let's be real. Like when it comes to the general announcements, he doesn't get those. He doesn't get the PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo big announcements. Like and and for the most part, it, it doesn't matter if you you play on one of these platforms. Yeah. You know, maybe PC people will care about his because they're not attached to a platform that they're doing. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you know, we could be honest with the, the situation. If you don't have one of those big announcements, a lot of us, especially me and you, we're going to care. We're going to watch it. But we're always going to look forward to, like, the PlayStation Showcase more, the Xbox Showcase. Because those games, I don't know. It's like it's like they hold more weight in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, there was a... A couple things that occurred now. We've all been anticipating, you know, you know, we were wondering. I was wondering why Xbox doesn't have a custom, you know, console for Starfield. We got this wonderful controller now. Let me tell you about this quickly. I, I know this is old news, but this controller is so meticulously designed that it literally teaches you how to play the game. It literally teaches you how to play the game if you pay attention to all like the button placements, the icons. It pretty much show you pretty much how to do the ship and um. Yeah, this is the ship uh, combat uh, control scheme, um, but it came in handy. Um, but they've they've put out uh, the console wrap for the Xbox Series X. Uh, they have two Army Fatigue ones, and they have the Starfield one, which is due to launch, I think, October twentieth. What are your thoughts on that, man? That was good. I- I'm just curious what the quality looks like and how over time are they going to fall apart? It's Fifty dollars, uh, by the way. How is it going to feel wrapped around your Xbox? Mm-hmm. I, I don't want it feeling like it's cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's $50, but we've paid $50 for for junk before. I, I just want mm-hmm. to make sure that, you know, it feels like... I want, like, the illusion it's an, it's a console, like, in a, like a, a console-themed Xbox that's not one. You know what I'm saying? I want the illusion when you wrap this sucker around your Xbox... If mm-hmm. someone walked by it, they wouldn't know it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, it fits so well on your Xbox, and it looks like it's just that's part of your Xbox. That's my only concern. Like, what's the quality going to look like? What's it going to look like? Uh, the Velcro. It looks like the Velcro uh, holding it. Is it Velcro is that, or is it is it magnetized? I heard it was. I don't know. It look it, it looked like Velcro to me, but you you're right. It might be magnetized. I didn't even think about that. But I just want to make. I, I hope it actually stays because it. You you probably more right on that vel uh, the magnetized because it would make sense because after I feel like I don't want that like wearing down and then and then I have to like tape it in the back or something you know what I'm saying yeah, like yeah yeah so we'll see though they're coming out soon October wasn't it yeah yeah but I mean I was hoping they have it in time for a start because they got a Starfield theme one I think that's like the last minute thing yeah yeah I feel like that should have came out uh, relatively soon I think this is a good alternative. Uh, like, I mean, obviously you prefer a custom console. PlayStation got a way around doing custom consoles because all they got to do is replace the plates, um, um, which is you can buy those. Um, so I think this is a good, um, you know, option for um, the Xbox. Will I get it? I don't know. Um, I'd like to, you know, try it to see how it looks in person. I think the renderings are good. I'm um, not a fan of the Army Fatigue ones, but I think they did a, a pretty uh, good job with it. I think if you look at it from from a standpoint of if this works well and it fits well and it looks well, this actually is probably a better option mm-hmm. than custom consoles because you can customize your console to whatever you're playing. So when uh, if this does well, I assume they'll have a Fable one. Mm-hmm. I can pick up the Fable one. Mm-hmm. So, that, you know, that way you don't have to go out and spend five six hundred dollars on making uh on buying a custom console uh i kind of wish they would have went the direction that that playstation went where they have the custom console and you could buy the wrap for your existing consoles i i I think you know it's the same console Mm -hmm. it's just you could wrap it or or you can just buy the 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 default one so that starfield wrap i would have liked that they would have made a custom console 
that doesn't have the wrap, but it's that's the console. And if you mm-hmm. buy that, you don't have to. You can just get the wrap. You know, it's it's pretty. It's essentially the same thing. It's just one is around it and one's built mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fair enough. I th- so, you know, a lot's going on um, uh, this week. Phil Spencer in the news had a, a, an amazing interview with uh, Destin Legary. I, I believe you covered uh, some of this, man. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things we can uh, tackle uh, from this, but they talked about, you know, obviously Redfall. Uh, uh, Destin pressed him about, you know, is Xbox going to be able to keep up with the four games a year promise? And uh, and um, he, he addressed that. They've also talked about, um, he even tried to catch him on like the uh, Baldur's Gate the, uh, 3 versus Starfield. Like, I, I, what are you, like, uh, bring me through this. I was catching snippets. I didn't, and apparently there's a full 40 minute uh, interview. I haven't seen that. I saw the initial 12 minute clip. The, there was two. I saw two parts. I didn't know they put them together. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them. That, that That's some, uh, that's some genius stuff. Get something like a Phil Spencer interview and start cutting it up. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, know, you, you know we're both watching that shit. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, one thing I want to say is, like, Dustin asked him hard questions. He didn't have, I have to ask him those hard questions. And there was another there was another interview with Phil that week. I think it was Xbox On. Mm-hmm. No offense to them, but they just, your typical... PR friendly questions didn't really push the narrative on anything. Didn't really ask anything. Like we knew just as much about the Xbox brand mm-hmm. before that interview. We knew after that interview. Yeah. And, and nothing yeah. against them, but it's like you get someone like Phil Spencer, and you don't really ask anything. Like ask anything that people would want to know. Uh, but no, not not. I mean, maybe maybe it's IGN. Even if they upset Phil. It's IGN. He's gonna have to work with them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I feel on that, but it's like Dustin asked some good questions. He asked about the Redfall 30 frames thing. Mm-hmm. You know, talked about Final Fantasy a little bit, and you know whether or not more of those games would come over to the Xbox ecosystem. Talked about Series S and X uh, mid generation cycles, and he doubled down, saying that that's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he he talked about a lot of things. It was, it was a very good interview. I recommend everyone listening to go watch it. And it was uh, during this interview where we found out that you know that he talked to Larian Games and they agreed. Uh, uh, I think he said he was going to talk. Yeah. To so, but the thing is, is like, time. how often does something like, oh, like talk? Oh, it's just a matter of a conversation of us having literally at a game showcase. Like that's thing, when I think of when things are business deals and, and stuff being discussed, it's like usually a call, some emails back and forth between, oh, my people get to your people, stuff like that. It's like, oh, there's Phil right now. Hey, like, so what can we do to get this game? <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, if, if it's a split screen, just go ahead and do it and work on a patch later. That that's what that's 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 how like that's what it feels like because he says he's going to talk to them, and what hours later, Larry comes out. Oh, we met with Phil Spencer, and we're going to be launching a game this year. On Xbox, that's <laughs> I don't. That just just so casual, like yeah. It I, does make it feel like you could have had that conversation months ago. Yeah, it, it kind of felt like Phil felt the pressure from the internet, mm-hmm. and you know, well, I guess we can go ahead and move on to that smooth if you want, like yeah. a drop in parody. Uh, it looked like it's probably going to be case to case thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like this was the correct move or do you feel like this is not necessarily an attack, but a, a bad look on Xbox Series S owners? Uh, h- how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel think? perfectly fine with it. What I don't like was the media trying to who there, there's a list of media outlets and, and one dude in particular, I forget his name, who made articles and tweets about how problematic the Series S would be because of this whole parody thing, right? And then when Xbox corrects it and says, all right, we're going to drop the parody, the, you know, games on Series right. X can have more features. Now you spin it and be like, oh, Xbox is breaking promises and all this stuff. But you literally just crucified them the week prior for not breaking the promise. Like stuff like that drives me nuts. It's like, so now you're going to turn, you presented a problem, right? Now they came up with a solution. Now you want to take that solution and turn it into a problem. I don't like when journalists do that. I can't stand them. Um, so, no, I don't have a, to answer your question. I don't have a problem with it. I don't think it's a bad look. I think what 
should happen is that what people need to understand is that you got two devices from uh, at Microsoft, right? They're selling you a premium product and then a, a low tier product. Like you get what you pay for. If you bought the Series S, you're buying the Series S knowing that, hey, you know, it's an Xbox. I'm still going to play, you know, the same games as the other Xbox. I'm just doing it. There's going to be some things missing. It's going to be probably not the uh, the goodest quality as what the, you know, the Series X may do. It may not be as big. It may not be as uh, beefy. It may be it may be lacking in some things. Everything that we buy today um, are, are, are sold in tiers, right? Everything we buy today are sold in tiers. Uh, so, yes. Uh, I don't think it's a, a a big deal, and people are trying to say, "Oh, this sets the standard for what?" My thing is, uh, they should be able to do whatever they want. I feel like the Xbox Series S and X should be able to. I think the Series X should be able to maximize its capabilities without being hammered, uh, hampered to the Series S, and the Series S should be able to just do what it's able to do with said games. The only co- co- question and concern. I would have um, about any parody thing is the actual game releases. I don't think there should be a scenario where a game releases on a Series X that's not available on a Series S. That's where it gets chunked. That's what I don't want to do. If you're talking about, I don't give a damn if a game launches without freaking modes or freaking um, uh, like split screen and stuff like that. I don't care about that. Like that is not a big of a deal. I think they should be able to do that. To, so they don't lose out on games and 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 it's gonna happen you know what i mean where did people get upset that when they bought when 360 owners and ps3 owners bought call of duty black ops 3 on their uh on their ps3s and 360s did were they mad that they didn't get the campaign or did they buy a ps4 or an xbox or an xbox one to get the full game experience because th- this has happened before this is not new um, and this isn't the first time Xbox went back off of off a mandate they created. Remember, they had like during the 360 era, they had like this hard drive mandate or something like that, um, where your game had to be able to fit on like a memory card because they used to sell 360s without a hard drive. You, it was optional, right? Remember that uh, the 360 mm-hmm. you, when they first launched, you had the arcade which didn't have a hard drive. You could buy it or you could buy a memory card, uh, or you had the 20 gigabyte hard drive. They were on that, and so that created a mandate. Like, all right, so you can't just make games that <laughs> can't fit, that you can't do without a hard drive. That's what it was. You can't make games uh, that required a hard drive because every 360 that they were selling didn't have. Technically, you didn't have to have a hard drive. But what happened when they got up, uh, uh, had the opportunity to get a marketing deal with Grand Theft Auto 4, which required a hard drive? That mandate was gone. Because you don't you don't you don't you you don't lose out on a Grand Theft Auto Four because a self imposed mandate they updated it so um, and they changed it and then they started selling making those hard drives cheap they didn't start sending uh, they even created a new three sixty that had the hard drives internal and all that other stuff so it like things happen this is not bad. Uh, nothing about this board. This is good for gamers. And the only thing that people are mad and they're trying to spin it is those uh, PlayStation fanboys and those PlayStation uh, news sites who wanted to treat Baldur's Gate as their exclusive because it has a good shot at winning game of the year. Um, they wanted that to be uh, theirs because they will be sorely missing out on Starfield. Um, so that's my take on the uh this whole you know xbox dropping parody i don't mind it i want the series x to do what it can is capable of doing and i want the series s to do what it's capable of doing but the one thing i do want i don't want i don't want xbox missing games because they can't fine tune the feature or mode uh for the series s because at the end of the day xbox is in this really the situation where technically you don't even have to ha- release a native version uh, for the Series S. You can literally delay the Series S version and have that whole entire game playable via cloud until, like, for example, if they wanted to, they could release the game on the Series X without the Series S, even though I'm against that. But they technically could do it and just have them stream it. Uh, uh, just like, all right, you know what? You can have access uh, to stream. You can stream the entire version of the game. Um, actually, if the game comes to Game Pass, they would be able to actually just if they don't want to play without split screen, they want to stream it and stream this Series X version. Do just that. Um, the other thing um, that that's funny 
So, so technically, when they release a physical version, right, of the game, this is why I they, they that Xbox could actually technically release physical uh, that that they can release Series X only games because there's no physical Series S games. So when you when they get games come out on a Series S as a disc, and there are still some double A, I think mean, double A uh, or NDP that have physical games right that don't exist digital but that physical games if that game's playable on the x it's uh, de facto an exclusive to the x um and and that and that technically can um uh can happen but i have no problem with the them dropping the uh the um the parody clause on case by case for specific games, as long as the Series S is still capable of playing games, technically there's no parity between the two because there's a ton of games on Series S that don't run at 120 FPS that the Series X does. There's games that are limited to 30 FPS but are 60 FPS on the Series X. There's games that have ray tracing on the Series X but don't have ray tracing on the Series S. There, there's capable. There's, there's that stuff that exists. Um, and, and and people just need to like really calm down about it. I agree with you. The biggest thing I want people to realize, you know, people want to bring up Xbox Series S, Xbox. I saw a bunch of people just straight up clout chasing to a degree. They're like, oh, you know, they they need to drop support. They are saying drop support for the Series S. That it was uh, holding the the Series X back. So they're like, okay, you know. There is some realms of truth behind this. Not necessarily the Series S can't handle it. The time frame just doesn't make sense. So, you know, let's let's disable the features that we can't get working on the Series S right now. We'll still try to get that working in the future, but at least the game will come out to the Series S. And, and what, what I find hilarious is then they do that. They're like, okay, you know, we understand what you guys are saying. What We're going to disable some of these features. Now they're like, oh, now, now, now if you bought a Series S... You you don't have you you're getting the 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 less superior version of the Series X, and all these people know damn well they ain't never played a split screen in probably ten years. So it, it's just like you gotta look for that perspective. But at the same time, you know I understand that technically the S people that's on the S is going to get a version that you know that's not going to be a hundred percent. It's going to be missing some features that the Series X version has. Yep. But at the same time, just as much as you can make that claim and you can fight the Series S, people are going to lose out on a feature. If they didn't do this, the Series X person just wasn't going to get the game. Yeah. So you're getting you're getting less games for buying a a more powerful SKU because you could put that balance on each side. Yeah. You know, sometimes if if it hurts the S. It helps the X, and sometimes if it hurts the X, it's going to help the S. So it's just like, look, like, you know, my question to you, Smooth, mm-hmm. do you want them to continue this trend next gen? Or do you just want them to have one console? Um, I, I, I mean, pr- I would prefer them to have one console, just make it physical, a physical version and a digital version, right? A di- um, but at the end of the day, can I, I I don't think I uh, can complain too much because people are hyped about a PS5 Pro for some damn reason, which is, is going to cause the PlayStation developers, the, I mean, uh, d- game developers, the same issue because now they got another PlayStation to account for and they're not going to determine. They're going to be like, all right, well, well, what should be our lead platform at this point? It, it just can conf- at this end of the day, like um, I'm I'm not mad at the existence of the Series S. I think they did a good job with the machine. And it's it's dumb that one game, one game, and one mode that's not even necessary for the game is the the is the quote unquote premature death to the Series S. Outside of all these games running at you know you know Armor Core Six just came out right, and that's doing fourteen forty p sixty fps on the Series S, while the PS Five and Series X is doing four K sixty. Like it, that game is is able to make its promise. We've seen games like uh, uh like other major games that have native Series S versions hit the the promises of fourteen forty p sixty and ten eighty one twenty or or um and some of them even hitting like four K for no damn reason. But uh, the Series S has a fair also have games uh, ray tracing. It, it hit the metrics that they it, they promise. It, they it hit these metrics. So it's. 
it, it, you gotta cherry pick select games that haven't hit the metrics and then you're like oh it's a mistake and mind you the series x the series s and even the ps5 have not have not even hit what like what their their targets they're not like they haven't hit their like their prime of usage. They haven't been maxed out yet, um, and so and the fact that we're about to get a PS5 Pro before they drop off releasing games for the PS4 is just ridiculous. So no, if they, I think a, I think a Series S2 and a Series X2 would be successful. You know, depending on what the game, uh, what gaming requirements. It's not are. necessarily if they'll be successful. Do you think they should do it? I think they should do it as long as it works. Cause there's always going to be weaker hardware out there. I, I be actually feel like they shouldn't, you know, mm. it, even though that you can argue that these things have worked out well for mm-hmm. them. I would argue that there's a lot of the industry that's just not feeling this. And to me, why pull your mid gen? Cause that's what, that's essentially what this is. Mm-hmm. You know, the series X is a mid gen refresh for the series S. Why would you play that card? Because you could potentially have a later part of the generation that's a lot worse for you because you played that early on in the game and now PlayStation, because they will have the strongest console. Yeah. When that PlayStation yeah. 5 Pro comes out, yeah. they will have the strongest console. Yeah. And like they're getting demolished in a lot of ways when it comes to you know performance now. Imagine when the PS5 Pro comes out. And it's not necessarily that that has to happen and, like, you know, powers everything. Because powers not everything. You know, development cycles, talent, mm-hmm. IP, that's more important than power. But power is definitely one of the factors. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm and i concerned on how the Series S performs the last, like, year or two of the generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the way I look at it is that, um, well, this is not the first time. Like, the PS4 Pro came out... You know, a whole year before there was an Xbox One X, so the PS there was a there was two. There, at the, we had a time where there was essentially the three. Phil PS- has doubled down almost on not having any type of mid generation. It's not necessary, dude. It's not necessary. It's not even. It's not necessary. Um, PlayStation for some reason is going hardware crazy. I think there's trouble of brewing, like because they got this. They got this. <laughs> they got this random PS portable PS portal coming out. They got this VR headset that nobody's buying. They got this. Um, you know, you're all right. They're going like real. For extra some reason, the hardware. Uh, the hardware it's like, why are they doing all this? They got these random ass headphones, right? Like, I, I don't understand why they're doing all this hardware stuff. Um, you know, and I think what's actually is going to happen. I think the the PlayStation 2020, uh, uh, 2023 to 2025 is going to be what the Xbox was, uh, 2017 to about 2020, where they're going to have the strongest box, but they're not going to have the best uh games or a lot of games remember when we had the xbox one x and the, but that's what the xbox one x came out at the time the PlayStation was getting in strike all their games coming out and it didn't even matter what the xbox one x was doing because they had you know just better games at the time good games and the games were quality graphical uh graphically amazing in that same span um good enough look good enough for a ps4 pro whatever um and here we're gonna have a uh a ps5 pro to show off Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2 and stuff like that at, you know, higher uh, frame rates or higher resolution with uh, uh, with better ray tracing performance. Is, is, is that what we're doing? Uh, would you rather that or the ability to play, you know, Avowed, Fable? I, I, honestly, at the time, the, the PS5, we launched in PS5 Pro, and you and, and we're at the time where Avowed, Fable, uh, and Perfect Dark, and all this other stuff is going to be coming out. I'm not going to care about playing the select PlayStation games on a PS5 Pro. I don't play my PlayStation enough now. Um, it is here. It's really pretty much here just to say I have it because I haven't played this shit since a, a very long time. I have not played this PlayStation in a very long time, and and I'm afraid to say it's because PlayStation has no games because I would be beat down on the internet. But right now, uh, there's nothing I'm looking forward to the game. It's collecting dust. It's not as much dust as uh, Ryan McCaffrey's PlayStation VR. They're going hardware <laughs> crazy, and I don't know why. And, and I feel like Trouble's a brewing because... I do. I don't think Trouble's a brewing, but I do think that you're going to get some form of a... A drought on the PlayStation. Oh, you know, absolutely. I, I I don't think it's a coincidence that they've just held on to, to you know people say oh they they're holding on to announcements. Why? Like 
there's no real reason to do that. I feel like they just got no announcements right now. You know, people don't realize how much of a shift they're doing into mm-hmm. games as a service. Look, does that mean they're going to stop the single player? No, but I do think that's going to stop significantly the amount of money they were putting out yeah. to exploring new IPs that are single player focused. Yeah. You know, that's why I think they're more comfortable going the 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 Horizon Forbi- uh, Forbidden West or Horizon Z- uh, Zero Dawns. And I think they're remaking the first one, Horizon. That's been a rumor for a while. <laughs> yeah. They're remaking Part 2, supposedly. Like, the, they're going into TV shows. Like, clearly you see a difference in the way PlayStation's moving. Like, this is no longer the Sean Layton after effect. Because I think a lot of the, the, the stuff that you've been seeing is stuff that was in the work because games take years to make. You know, and we're seeing a lot of Sean Layton stuff with the God of Wars that was done during his time, mm-hmm. the Horizons. Like, I think you're now seeing what Jim Ryan's future of PlayStation is. Mm-hmm. And it's not a coincidence. He's a money dude. Yep. And some of the best money you can make in the industry is what, Kit Smooth? I mean, it's games and service. Uh, service and what is he focusing on almost entirely on, Smooth? Games as a service. Yeah, and I don't want people thinking that that's like the end of the world because I do think he's going to deliver good single player games. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't think that's his priority. I think if anything, games as a service is a little higher, if not the same priority as those single player games that the fan base loves so much. Yeah. Because if you look, they opened up with the games as a service to to their last showcase. Yeah, they, yeah, they, um, it was it was a heavily it was a heavy focus. Yeah, PlayStation will be in a drought, and they were in a drought this year. Had it not been for Final Fantasy, um, or Square Enix in general, Final Fantasy and Forspoken, like no Spider Man would have been the only thing. Um, what do you think? So, uh, what do you think is a more of an L, uh, Forspoken or Redfall? Redfall. Um, yeah, I think Redfall is more of an L. I, and what's sad is I don't think it's by much, but it's definitely more of an L. Well, the thing is, is the PlayStation fans and PlayStation have the courtesy of saying, well, Forspoken isn't a PlayStation IP. It's not a PlayStation game. It's just now it's just a, a regular game, a multiplayer. They won't even like claim it because it's on PC. It'll be on Xbox in some years. Who knows? Um, Xbox Redfall is the first party and it was the first next generation game under the Bethesda. What you know, Hi-Fi Rush technically was the first one, um, but it was... To me, the only game that they have this year is Spider-Man. I, I wasn't the biggest yeah. fan of Final Fantasy 16. I dropped it. You know, I, I understand a lot of people liked it, but, you know, yeah, Spider-Man. The, the thing is, Spider-Man is the only game, but the thing is, it's, it's Spider-Man. We've played, this is the, for for me, this is literally what feels like the, the fourth, the fifth Spider-Man in five years. And the reason why I say that is because uh, you had Spider-Man 2018, right? All right, it was great. It was phenomenal. Boom, 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 whatever. Miles Morales, they followed up with a, you know, a little, all right, okay, this is good. Launch title for a PS5 made sense, right? And then you come back with the Spider-Man remastered because you got the remaster for the PS5 and then you got to put it on PC. And PC is a separate release. Miles Morales then comes to the PC, it's a separate release now. And I've, I've participated in some of these re-releases. And um, now you got Spider-Man 2 is just like at this point it's fatigue. And the thing is it's not like Spider-Man can do actually anything different or new or like it's going to be good. Nobody's going to deny that it's going to be a it's going to be a good game. Uh, I don't think they can mess up the formula. But it's fatigue. It's like how much better can it actually be? Um and I think when you consider the game because the first game was so good um I don't think it can get any better. Like I think Miles Morales was a better game than the base Spider-Man game, but it they they the, the score is the same. It's like you can't get much better than what that is. Whatever problem you have with Spider-Man and Miles Morales is going to be the same problems in Spider-Man Two. The only thing that's going to get better is the story, assuming you uh, like that story arc or uh, in the characters. But nothing's changing about New York City. Nothing's really changing about the gameplay. It's going to look prettier. Uh, that's the, the best. The character, um, I, I, that's not me hating on the game. I, I'm looking forward to the game, and my my excitement will get better once we get closer to it. But the thing is, it's, it's fatigue. I played Spider Man like four different times in the last four years, man. Like so. I, I don't think 
I'm personally Spider-Man fatigued because I, I think there's going to be some really interesting, you know, dynamics that that's going to happen with uh, Spider-Man Two, especially with like Venom, the black suit, you know, the the interaction between Peter and Miles. Uh, but I do understand what you're saying. Like after Spider-Man Two, they need to focus on Wolverine for an installment base or two. Like yeah. maybe have Spider-Man show up as like a as a as a guest on, on Wolverine, and maybe you use them for a little bit on that. But as far as Spider-Man titles, they need to focus more on Wolverine for maybe an installment or two. Yeah, fair enough. Um, man, so we just uh, crushed, you know, in uh, an hour or so. Um, trying to think if there's if, if there's any other thing that we're missing. Like again, we love to talk more about games like you know Starfield, but you know that's coming next uh, uh next week we'll have the you know all out starfield show uh man um other than just to give you guys a shout out the gameplay that we're uh, that you're seeing on the screen here is obviously madden 24 you know shout out to xbox game pass ea access to get the 10 hour trial uh trying to uh, maintain that because i do not want to spend the 60 or 70 on a madden game um uh, but this one's okay played a little bit of it um there was oh my god i feel like there's something else that i'm uh missing man i feel like there was a a news beat that uh came out that excited me for a little bit and i'm it, it's just it's not stark we didn't talk about the ubisoft and xbox thing but do we really want to oh, talk about that again yeah we don't need a whole thing about it i mean i have a you know video on it i think you have a video on it um so just a uh, quick recap. Uh, the CMA has gotten a new proposal for Microsoft to buy uh, Activision Blizzard. And this new re proposal is required because they blocked the original one that everybody else in the world accepted. But it's the CMA is, is so special over there. So um, they're going to divest the cloud portion of Activision games. Through Ubisoft, Ubisoft will be the, able to distri distribute and license Activision Blizzard games through Ubisoft Connect to others, which is a good partner. Um, I like Ubisoft, uh, so there that is under review, and we should s have a decision on that from the uh, CMA in about, I'm going to say, at this rate, it takes so damn long with this stuff, probably four to six weeks, and hopefully this will all be over by uh, mid to late October. Um, at that point, I no longer care. I'm gonna, um, I'm so deep into Starfield. I, can, I just want this uh, Activision Blizzard news to just shut up and, and that people, they should have just approved this deal from the jump. But that's pretty much what's going on there. And Phil Spencer said Call of Duty games, a lot of those games won't jump into Game Pass immediately because there's a lot of hurdles they have to do to get that done. Um, that's the thing that's no, I think that's why I don't personally care about it anymore because it's like I'm I was expecting once the deal closes, maybe a week or so after, like a bunch of games just start pumping in. Like how they did with Zenimax, they had two phases. With I think Zenimax. you'll see, I think you'll see a good amount of them go, but there will be some that, yeah. uh, you know, they have to actually do some on the back end. Yeah, I think they, um, they're gonna do more backwards compatibility stuff, yeah, uh, because it, it doesn't. Jason Ronald said that. At the time, that's all they needed, but I think these change the circumstances, these change the variables. Yeah. So I think, you know, you're going to see them revisit that program just a little bit. Yeah. You know, get some games that they're able to transfer easily. Uh, I think you'll see that, and I think they'll enhance some of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that I think that uh, took some of the, the punch out of what I wanted to... Um... Uh, what I wanted uh, for the deal, but again, when it happens, it happens. Uh, I'm just happy that Xbox is in a cycle of getting games. Have you seen Game Pass? Uh, the coming soon list for Game Pass is freaking epic. From Sea of Stars, uh, wait, well, you first you got the Chainsaw Massacre. I saw you playing the other uh, the, the other week. Uh, Check Chainsaw Massacre, which just launched in there. You got Sea of Stars um, um, coming. Obviously. Game Pass is looking really good, yeah, man. You got like, Starfield, Party Animals, Payday 3, uh, Lies of P, um, Forza. Oh, my God. Uh, there's a... 
what else um is, is coming through there's just a lot of and i'm just like damn i got to get through these games man but uh game pass is uh looking pretty pretty good pretty good but um you guys uh you have a you guys have a special episode of uh one i want to say give you guys praise shout out for the iron lords podcast but you guys have the peter moore episode uh did great it was a wonderful interview um um he um that w- it was just a good podcast looking forward to hopefully you guys get that uh part two that he was talking about but oh yeah we we are it's yeah. it's confirmed I, I won't say what date because uh cog might kill me if i say the date okay awesome uh but it, it's definitely confirmed awesome that was a good episode for sure um and then uh you're going away next week yes uh you know Right now, we're most likely going to be going to Washington State next year, uh, next month, because okay. we're going to PAX West. Okay. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. We'll be there in the uh, where, where Xbox is. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll get something going with them. I don't know. We're going to be there where Bungie is, too. Uh, so, uh, it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. I want to uh, thank everyone for showing up uh, this week. You know, we still have an IOP. Cog, uh, he, he won't be there. But King is going to be hosting IOP. Oh, this is going to be a good one. First, this is the first time he's ever hosted something, and we already arguing about stuff. We already arguing about stuff. He he wants the title exactly how he wants it. He wants the uh, the thumbnail exactly how he wants it. I'm like, well, I was like, King, you know the the title needs to be this way because it's better for the algorithm. He's like, I'm host. It's going to be the way I want it to be. I'm like, okay, like this. Is- well, we look forward to them and check that out. Um, I'll definitely be in the chat. Um, you got any other thing else that you're working on that you would like to uh, share? Um, definitely check out IOP's coverage too. Uh, all of us have a code. We've been playing Starfield. Uh, let's check out our coverage on my personal channel. I'm going to be reviewing Sea of Stars when the embargo lifts on that. Mm-hmm. I'm almost done with that game, so I'm probably going to put down Starfield for uh considering the i think i got like i don't know if breaking embargo is how many hours i have i doubt it no i got like almost 40 hours uh, of starfield so you know i was never going to beat this game before the embargo lifted you know maybe if i beat star uh, uh maybe if i beat sea of stars today i'll finish starfield tomorrow but that would involve me just like beelining the rest of the story and i don't really want to do that for yeah. this particular game yeah so, I think, obviously, I'm going in there with a, I played, we're going to probably go off how many hours individually played, so, you know, we, we, maybe we'll get a moderator in there, I don't know, we'll see. But, you know, I appreciate everyone coming through, you know, it, it's, it's, love the support we keep getting from, from the Weapon World community, I know a bunch of you don't like me, but that's fine, because I don't like you either. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it, it's good, man. It's good. I, I think you guys are going to enjoy the Starfield covers that me and, and Smooth do this Thursday, I think at 12 p.m., mm-hmm. I believe. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, maybe I'll do a little editing on the, in the back end. I don't know. I'm doing a lot of editing right now. It, you know, is it 12 p.m. Eastern? Eastern? Or is it not 12 a.m.? Yes. 12 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Okay. So it's noon, it looked like. But anyway, appreciate you ever coming through, and uh, we will see you Thursday. All right, man. We will see you guys Thursday. As always, man, thank you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the Patreon. Continue to support. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We're out of here. Peace. Peace and love. Peace and love.